Mateo Hernandez, and this is my paper airplane redesign project presentation. So, going into this project, I didn't have much experience with paper planes, to be honest. I didn't really uh, use them much as a kid or played around with them. So, um, I just kind of went in there, like, folding randomly, um, just to see what I could come up with, with no research or background really in it. So these are the steps that I took to build the first plane that I came up with, which was a fairly easy design. As you can see, the first like four steps is how like any paper plane starts, uh, folding the sheet in half and then folding uh, the edges until they meet in the middle. And then I folded it in half. I folded the flap down till it was about two thirds of the way, did the same on the other side. Then I folded the front part until it met the bottom on both sides and then I folded this back flap until it met the bottom both both on, on both sides and then this is the uh, bottom view of the plane and this is the top view of the plane um, so then I, I tested it out I ran test results and then it um, it wasn't really good there was a lot of drag just for the fact that it wasn't like necessarily completely like aerodynamic and I would throw it, and what would happen is like it would go maybe a good 250 centimeters, but then it'd like catch the drift and it'd like go back like 50 centimeters to like 200. And that kept happening like over and over again as I like kept on running my trials. And so what I realized was I needed a plane that was more aerodynamic that could cut through the, um, the air better. And so I did my research on that. And so my next plane, what I did is uh, started off the same, same, same four steps, folding the paper in half until it meets the middle. And then this, this step was vital. Instead of folding the, um, instead of folding the flaps to where the, like folding it in half to where the flaps were inside, I folded it in half to where these flaps were outside so I could get a better grip at the bottom. And then I just folded this for the front until it, met, until it met the bottom, both sides. And then I folded it twice. So I folded it here and then I folded it again. And I did the same thing until it looked like this. And the difference was now it had more of like an arrowhead type. Like this literally looks like an arrowhead. And so it cut through the air much better and then I tested these results and they were like three times as, as, as three times better than um, the plane I made before as, um, as it just cut better. It was a sleeker design. Um, it was like an arrowhead. And uh, so these are the results I got from the first plane. This is the first plane. I got 184 centimeters. It averaged out to like 203. And then for the second plane, the average was like 648, um, something around there. Um, so it increased like greatly. As you can see, one of these trials even went to 881 centimeters. So um, clearly um, the changes I made were to um, enhance the uh, paper plane's performance. Uh, yeah. And then these are the sources I use to research, and uh, this one it talks about aerodynamics. I know you probably can't see it; it's very small. And paper plane designs and what is best for it, you know, to keep it like lightweight, to keep um, the weight evenly distributed to, and in a sleek and sort of arrow and like like straight kind of pointy um, design would be the best. Here again, aerodynamics and things like that. But um, yeah, that, that's all. Uh, I think I did a did a good job in um, making my second plane better.